London, with its rich tapestry of history, has long been a city where the past intertwines with the present. Beneath its streets lies a network of tunnels and stations that make up the famous London Underground, often referred to as the Tube. Among these stations, Bethnal Green stands out not just for its historical significance, but also for the eerie stories and unexplained phenomena that have made it one of the most haunted locations in the city. This video delves into the history of Bethnal Green Tube Station, the tragic events that have left an indelible mark on the location, and the ghostly encounters that continue to intrigue and terrify those who pass through its corridors. Bethnal Green Tube Station, located in the East End of London, was opened on December 4th, 1946, as part of the Central Line Extension. However, its history goes back a few years earlier, to a time when the station was used in a very different capacity. During World War II, construction on the station was halted, and it was repurposed as an air raid shelter. The East End of London was heavily bombed during the Blitz, and thousands of residents sought refuge in the underground tunnels. Bethnal Green Station was one of the largest shelters in the area, capable of accommodating up to 10,000 people. The Bethnal Green disaster stands as one of the most tragic yet lesser known events of World War II in Britain. Occurring on the night of March 3, 1943, this disaster claimed the lives of 173 people, many of them women and children, in a horrific crush within the entrance of Bethnal Green Tube Station. During World War II, London was a city under siege. The Blitz, a sustained bombing campaign by Nazi Germany, began in September 1940 and lasted until May 1941, though sporadic bombings continued throughout the war. The East End of London, home to Bethnal Green, was particularly vulnerable due to its proximity to the docks and industrial areas that were prime targets for bombing raids. To protect civilians, the government converted parts of the London Underground into air raid shelters. Bethnal Green Tube Station, although not fully operational as a station until after the war, served as one such shelter. It was one of the largest in East London, with the capacity to hold up to 10,000 people. Thousands of local residents regularly sought refuge there during air raids. On the evening of March 3rd, 1943, Londoners were on high alert. Just the day before, the British government had announced a heavy bombing raid on Berlin by the Royal Air Force, leading to fears of a retaliatory strike. At 8.17 p.m., the air raid sirens began to wail across the city, and people rushed to the safety of the nearest shelters. In Bethnal Green, around 1,500 people converged on the tube station, which had a single entrance accessed by a narrow staircase. The station's entrance was poorly lit, and the steps were wet and slippery from the rain earlier that day, adding to the danger. As the crowd surged towards the shelter, a woman carrying a child reportedly tripped near the bottom of the stairs, setting off a catastrophic chain reaction. People began to fall on top of one another, creating a human pileup in the confined space. Panic ensued as more people pressed forward from behind, unaware of the tragedy unfolding at the front of the line. Within minutes, the stairwell was jammed with bodies, and the weight of the crowd caused hundreds to be crushed. Despite the best efforts of those at the scene, including off-duty policemen and local residents, the situation quickly became fatal. In total, 173 people were killed, 27 men, 84 women, and 62 children, making it the deadliest civilian incident in Britain during the war. The aftermath of the Bethnal Green disaster was one of shock, grief, and initially, secrecy. The bodies of the victims were taken to the nearby Bethnal Green Town Hall, which was turned into a temporary mortuary. Many of the dead were from the local area, and the scale of the loss devastated the tight-knit community. In the immediate aftermath, the government imposed a media blackout on the incident, 
fearing that news of the disaster would damage morale and be used as propaganda by the enemy. It wasn't until the summer of 1943 that the public was fully informed about the tragedy. A government inquiry was held to determine the cause of the disaster and to recommend measures to prevent a similar occurrence in the future. The inquiry found that the disaster was primarily caused by the combination of poor lighting, the narrowness of the stairwell, and the sudden influx of people into the shelter. It is perhaps unsurprising that such a tragic event has led to reports of paranormal activity at Bethnal Green Tube Station. Over the years, numerous witnesses, including station staff, commuters, and paranormal investigators, have reported eerie experiences, particularly in the vicinity of the stairway where the disaster occurred. One of the most commonly reported phenomena is the sound of crying or sobbing, often described as the distressed cries of women and children. These sounds are usually heard late at night when the station is quieter. Some have described the cries as heart-wrenching and filled with despair, making it impossible to ignore the connection to the tragic events of 1943. In addition to the crying, footsteps have been heard echoing through the station, even when it is deserted. These footsteps are often described as hurried, as if people are rushing to safety, echoing the panic of that fateful night. There have also been numerous sightings of shadowy figures and apparitions at Bethnal Green. Witnesses have reported seeing figures standing at the bottom of the stairway or on the platform. These figures are said to vanish when approached, leaving behind a chilling sense of unease. Some of the apparitions have been described in more detail with reports of a woman holding a child, a group of people huddled together as if seeking comfort, and lone figures who seem lost or confused. These sightings have been reported both by station staff and by commuters, many of whom were unaware of the station's tragic history before their encounters. Another commonly reported phenomenon at Bethnal Green Tube Station is the sudden and inexplicable drop in temperature in certain areas particularly near the stairwell. These cold spots are often accompanied by a feeling of dread or unease, with some people describing the sensation as though they are being watched or even touched by unseen hands. Several paranormal investigators who have visited the station have reported similar experiences, noting the distinct drop in temperature in specific areas, as well as sudden feelings of sadness or fear that seem to come out of nowhere. One employee shared his terrifying experience while he was working at the station. It was an ordinary night shift, and the last train had departed from the station. The station was quiet. The usual rush of commuters had long since dissipated, and the staff had all gone home, except for one man who remained behind to close up. His tasks for the night were routine. Secure the station, turn off the lights, and finish up some paperwork in his office before heading home. After completing his rounds and ensuring that the station was empty, he returned to his office, which was located in a secluded part of the station. He settled in to complete his paperwork, eager to finish up and leave. The station was eerily silent, but this was something he had grown accustomed to during his late night shifts. However, the quiet was soon broken by a sound that sent a chill down his spine. It started softly an almost indistinct noise that could easily have been dismissed as a trick of the mind or the echoes of a distant street. But as the minutes passed, the sound grew louder and clearer, the unmistakable sound of children sobbing. At first, the man tried to ignore it, convincing himself that it was just his imagination. But the crying persisted, growing more intense, until it became impossible to disregard. It was as if the walls themselves were resonating with the sorrow of unseen children. The sobs were heart-wrenching, filled with a palpable sense of fear and despair. The man's unease grew as the sounds became more varied and disturbing. Alongside the sobbing, he began to hear the voices of women, pleading, panicked voices, 
as though they were in the midst of some unimaginable horror. And then came the screams, sharp, desperate, and chilling. The cacophony of sounds built into a terrifying symphony that seemed to envelop the entire station. He described the noises as unlike anything he had ever heard before, an otherworldly chorus of panic and terror that defied explanation. The sound was so intense, so filled with raw emotion, that it felt as though the very air in the room was charged with fear. For 10 to 15 minutes, the man sat frozen in his office, paralyzed by fear. Every instinct urged him to flee, but he was too terrified to move. The sound seemed to come from all directions, as if the station itself had come alive with the memories of those who had perished on that fateful night in 1943. Finally, overwhelmed by terror, the man could stand it no longer. He bolted from his office, running through the deserted station as fast as he could. His only thought was to escape the haunting sounds that pursued him. He rushed up the stairwell to the booking hall, his heart pounding in his chest, and didn't stop until he reached the top. Out of breath and shaken, he glanced back, half expecting to see some ghostly figure emerging from the darkness. But there was nothing, only the oppressive silence of the empty station. The sounds had ceased as abruptly as they had begun, leaving behind an eerie stillness. The man left the station, deeply disturbed, and his account of what happened spread quickly among the station staff. It wasn't long before he learned that his experience was not unique. Over the years, other employees working late at Bethnal Green had reported hearing the same disturbing sounds, sobbing children, terrified women, and the blood-curdling screams of unseen souls. These reports have led many to believe that the spirits of those who died in the Bethnal Green disaster continue to haunt the station. The sheer magnitude of the tragedy coupled with the sudden and violent manner of the deaths, has left what some would describe as a psychic imprint on the location. The sorrow and panic of that night seemed to replay in the station's corridors, echoing down through the decades. For those who have encountered these ghostly phenomena, the experience is a powerful reminder of the lives lost and the horrors of that tragic night. The sounds they hear are not just eerie noises. They are the echoes of a past filled with fear and anguish, the cries of those who sought safety but found only death. Bethnal Green Tube Station is more than just a transportation hub. It is a place where history and the paranormal intersect. The tragic events of the 1943 disaster have left an indelible mark on the station, and for many, the ghostly encounters reported there are a testament to the lingering presence of those who perished. Whether one believes in ghosts or not, the stories shared by those who have experienced the unexplained at Bethnal Green offer a compelling narrative of a place where the past refuses to be forgotten. The station stands as a poignant reminder of the lives lost in one of London's darkest moments and as a site where the boundary between the living and the dead feels particularly thin. For those who pass through Bethnal Green Tube Station, the haunting legacy of its history is a silent companion, ever present and waiting to be acknowledged. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to like and subscribe.